Today we will cover nine common everyday drugs that can be harmful to the heart, and many people are unaware of this. It is known that certain frequently used medications can negatively affect heart health. Most of these drugs, which I will mention, are acquired without a prescription, and many individuals use them without having gone through a medical consultation to evaluate the safety of their use. Let's begin. Number 1. Tricyclic Antidepressants Tricyclic antidepressants, primarily used in the treatment of depression, are also indicated for anxiety disorders, nocturnal enuresis, which is when a person involuntarily urinates at night, for chronic pain and even for migraine cases. For example, we have amitriptyline, nortriptyline, and imipramine. They are effective in treating depression, but they have unwanted side effects on the heart, especially in individuals with pre-existing heart diseases. This class of medication can cause a change in the electrocardiogram known as QT interval prolongation, which can lead to cardiac arrhythmias. Additionally, tricyclic antidepressants can also raise blood pressure. Therefore, if you have high blood pressure, have had a heart attack or have had a stroke, talk to your cardiologist first before starting to use this type of medication. You might be wondering, how am I going to treat my depression? If you have heart disease and are using one of these medications, it is crucial to talk to your doctor. Each case is unique. Today, there are other classes of medications to treat depression that are safer for the heart. The treatment of depression is not done only with the use of tricyclic antidepressants. Currently, there are other options that are safer for the heart muscle. Number two, contraceptives. Among the drugs that are harmful to the heart, one of the worst is precisely one of the most used by women worldwide. Contraceptives, used by 61% of American women, are a major danger to cardiovascular health. Oral contraceptives, especially those containing estrogens in their composition like ethanylostradiol, for example, can increase the risk of accumulating fat in the arteries and forming blood clots, leading to the development of cardiovascular problems, such as high blood pressure, heart attacks or strokes, for example. These effects can occur even with pills with a low dose of hormones and in any woman. However, the risk is higher in women who already have some heart problem or who suffer from overweight, obesity, diabetes, or who smoke. In addition, contraceptives also increase the risk of venous thrombosis, especially in smoking women over 35 years old. Thus, the use of contraceptives should always be assessed with the gynecologist to identify possible risk factors. Number 3. Neoseldina The composition of neoseldina includes dipirone, which relieves pain, caffeine, which acts as a stimulant, and isomethepine, which restricts blood vessels. Due to isomethepine, which is an agent that contracts blood vessels, neoseldina can raise both blood pressure and heart rate. Isomethepine, present in neoseldina, is the most significant element that can impact the heart, as it contracts blood vessels, which can cause an increase in blood pressure. Excessive or continuous consumption of neoseldina can be harmful, especially for individuals with a history of heart diseases, such as hypertension. This occurs because isomethepine can raise blood pressure, worsening existing health conditions. Number 4. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and diclofenac, commonly used to relieve pain and reduce inflammation, can cause heart problems. These medications, especially in high doses and prolonged use, can harm the heart. Anti-inflammatories can raise blood pressure, accumulate sodium and fluids in the body, and affect platelet function. This harms blood vessels, increasing the possibility of clot formation. However, the risk and severity of side effects vary among people, depending on factors such as age, pre-existing heart conditions, and concurrent use of other medications, as well as the duration of use of the anti-inflammatory. For example, patients with heart diseases should consult their cardiologist to choose a safe anti-inflammatory. Similarly, people with hypertension should be careful, as blood pressure can increase significantly with the use of these medications without medical guidance. Some anti-inflammatories, like naproxen, have fewer side effects, but still should be used for short periods. It is important to treat the cause of pain, as the use of anti-inflammatories can only mask a more serious problem. Pain is a warning sign from the body that something is wrong. Also, when the effect of the medication wears off, the pain returns. Therefore, avoid self-medication and seek to treat the cause of your pain. Number 5. 
first-generation antihistamines. First-generation allergy medications such as chlorpheniramine can cause adverse effects on the heart, such as arrhythmias, acceleration of heartbeats, and increased blood pressure. Arrhythmias can be triggered due to the anticholinergic properties of these drugs, which can interfere with the electrical impulses of the heart, altering its normal rhythm. Compared to second-generation antihistamines, these medications have a more intense sedative effect, potentially causing drowsiness, difficulty concentrating, as well as other effects such as dry mouth, blurred vision, constipation, urinary retention, and, as previously mentioned, cardiac arrhythmias. Therefore, if you are experiencing allergic symptoms like a runny nose or nasal irritation, it is important to seek medical advice instead of self-medicating. Number six, nasal decongestants. These are drugs that you can acquire without a prescription, like those used for nasal decongestion. I'm not referring to saline solution, but to decongestants. Who usually uses them? I want to know. Leave your comment if you use nasal decongestants. Some of them, like pseudoephedrine, can be harmful to our cardiovascular system. This substance acts as a stimulant, potentially raising blood pressure and heart rate. For people without heart diseases, the risk is very low. However, if you have a pre-existing condition such as high blood pressure, coronary artery disease, or severe arrhythmias, avoid using decongestants like pseudoephedrine. There are safer alternatives for those with heart problems. Consult your otolaryngologist for the right guidance. Inform them of your history of heart diseases to receive the most appropriate treatment. If you have allergies or upper airway obstruction, they will prescribe a safer medication. See how valuable this information is. I bet many of you did not know about nasal decongestants. If you're enjoying the video, share it with family and friends. My goal is always to help the world, and I want to know if you will join this mission. Well, number 7. Weight Loss Medications Certain medications still used for weight loss, like sibutramine, are linked to an increased risk of cardiovascular events, including heart attacks and strokes. The prescription of this medication must be done with extreme caution and only for selected patients, as there are currently more effective treatments for weight loss. Indiscriminate use of sibutramine can be dangerous. This medication is potent and indicated for treating obesity. But I observe many people using it without medical indication, which is risky. Never use sibutramine without a prescription, as this can be extremely dangerous to your health. I have seen cases of people mixing thyroid medications, antidepressants, stimulants, sedatives, and gastritis medications into a single capsule, resulting in rapid weight loss followed by even greater gain. Irresponsible prescriptions are common, so be very careful. Anorectics. The category of medications to which sibutramine belongs can raise blood pressure, increase cardiac risk, and cause arrhythmias. Therefore, they are contraindicated in patients with severe heart diseases. If you use this type of medication, it is essential that your doctor closely monitors you due to potential side effects. Number 8. Corticosteroids Did you know that corticosteroids, commonly used in the treatment of inflammatory diseases, immune disorders, and in transplant patients, also pose risks? The prolonged use of these medications, especially in high doses, can increase blood pressure, cause fluid retention, and elevate the risk of congestive heart failure, especially in people who already suffer from this condition. Continuous use of corticosteroids can cause metabolic changes, such as increased glucose levels, electrolyte imbalance, and elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels. All this can significantly increase the risk of developing heart diseases in the future. In addition, Prolonged use of corticosteroids can raise the risk of clot formation in blood vessels, both in veins and arteries. It's true that some people need to use corticosteroids continuously, sometimes for extended periods or even for the rest of their lives. This is not a problem as long as there is appropriate medical monitoring and regular consultations with a cardiologist. It is crucial not to neglect periodic exams to monitor heart health. Number 9. Stimulants there are stimulant medications, especially those intended for the treatment of Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder ADHD. These drugs can accelerate heart rate, raise blood pressure, and increase the risk of certain types of cardiac arrhythmias. In rare cases, they can even exacerbate pre-existing heart diseases. The key point here is to remember that all these medications offer benefits in specific situations. The fact that they can affect the heart does not mean they should not be used. 
it is essential to use them under medical supervision to ensure everything goes well. Just as I mentioned about corticosteroids, there are diseases that require continuous use of this type of medication. This video aims to alert you if you are taking any of these medications without a medical prescription. Consult your doctor and ask, Doctor, is it safe for me to take this medication? Seek a specialist and use the medicine cautiously, under medical supervision, especially if you have heart disease. Another important point is that if you have a cold, inform the doctor in the emergency room about your health condition and the medications you are already using before they prescribe any other medication. I hope this video has been useful to you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.